Right, we're going to do a little science test here. This is the LSC pump I took off. That's a P38 pump that I borrowed from the P38 project. Um, and the problem, as you've seen already on the last LSC episode, was that the replacement pump, which I believe to be a Dunlop, was fiendishly noisy. But effective. So what I've done here, 12 volt battery, I've got a 12 volt supply, I've got the two connectors, they're both exactly the same by the way, P38 or Classic, exactly the same connectors, sorry the guys are making a racket. Um, the actual pump section though is different from the P38 to the Classic and the mounting plate as well is different but you could easily use, if it was actually the motor that had died, uh, you could use a P38 motor on. However, the pump is what I've got the problem with. So, let us do some science. So first of all, we're gonna test the noise of these things. The, um, the, uh, the standard pump first of all. So the inlet is on this side, the outlet is here. So noise first. It's a bit noisy, isn't it? Let's see what the air is like on it. Yeah, it's got airflow. So I'm level with the back of the pump. It's pushing the blue paper towel. Do the same test now on the P38 pump. So black to black, green to red. It's really just connecting up the circuit here. Ah, yeah. Noise. Sounds a lot lazier. Um, and it's got a lot more air coming out. I mean, look at that. That's that is. So there's a lot more go in the P38 pump than there was in the original pump. So swapping the original pump out was the right idea. However, the replacement pump that's gone in, as you've seen, is fiendishly noisy. Um, so I've been uh, talking to uh, Dingo Croft, where I bought it from, uh, to find out if there are any known faults. No, there's no known faults. Of course, there's never any known faults. No slur on Dingo Croft whatsoever. The guys are amazing. Um, but, you know, it's a Dunlop pump. I believe this is uh, probably an original Wabco pump. So I'm going to look with the customer's permission, because this still belongs to the customer, take this thing apart and see if I can reseal it. Um, alternatively, because um, I believe the motor on this is fine, but it's the pump section which has failed, this piece at the top here. Um, yeah, I don't know, that's the honest answer. <laughs> it doesn't help much, does it? Well, LSE's back in. Um, basically, it's come in just for a few jobs to be tidied up on it. Um, bits that I couldn't do before um, the imposed deadline. The customer needed it back to move home and so forth. So, first and foremost, we're going to sort out the noisy air suspension. So, I've put a couple of stands underneath the chassis. And now, really, all I'm going to do here is depressurise the system. So, depressurise the tank. Right, so we're all out on the bench now. I'm next to my trusty fan. Um, it's 36 degrees out there at the moment. Uh, and climbing. Hottest day of the life of this planet, according to the weather people. Oh, no, no, no. It just goes back as far as history records began, um, which would be the blink of a fart, whatever that is. Now, um, we need to get the valve block out because the issue I've got is with the exhaust side of things down here. Uh, we've got the dryer, we've got the pump. Both of those have been refurbished. Uh, I've got one more pipe I need to pull off here. It goes to the dryer. Now basically, these rings, you push the ring in, then you pull the pipe out. You don't have to massacre them, you don't have to manipulate them, you don't have to fuck around with them. There we are, and that's out. So on the back of the valve block here, we should have four volts, which we have. Oh my goodness, it is hot though, I'll give it that. <laughs> now I don't want to disturb the valve block, all the solenoids, all I want to do is look at the exhaust. And there's a block apparently, that has two screws in it, which you undo, and then you replace the seals. <laughs> Oh, 
I will need to undo the blue pipe that goes into the block. It's the only one I've not undone yet, though, which means. Should be worry. 12 mil. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Come on, off we come. And I'm taking the whole bloody union with it. Yeah, that's good. That's the blue pipe released with this Waterwick. Just go on to tighten up again. There we go, and the last two bolts, and then the valve block should be free. The valve block should come out. And it does. Look at that. Out we come. Oh yes. Now I don't want to touch any of that logic. What I want to do is look under here. Actually, I'm not sure which one it is on this. Is it six or is it nine and seven? I think what we need to do is get the manual. Can you even see what's going on? You can't really. Let's move that to back there. Let's move this to here so we can see what's going on. So each of these ports here has a specific purpose. We get some light. So you can see we've got port six, five, four, three, one, two, eleven, nine, seven. There is no port eight. God knows why. Now, obviously, I'm being careful of anything going into these ports. I don't want anything to go in there. Um, but what I do need to do is to work out, I think it's this block under here. That's the inlet, and I think that's where the diaphragm is. So let me get the manual. Right, on the inlet, ports nine and seven, undone the four big screws underneath. Interestingly, three of them have washers, one didn't. So someone's been here before. Uh, also, interestingly, it's all full of bloody crap and shite underneath it. So someone's definitely been in here before. Now underneath there you will find a big o-ring. There should be, then I believe there should be a smaller o-ring and then you've got the, 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 the poppet. The now there's a spring inside this as well by the way, the spring goes inside the valve block there so just don't lose the bloody spring. All right. Poppet comes out, o-ring comes out, Okay, and this kit here is for a P38, but it's effectively the same valve block. So we will get a new O-ring and pop it out. That's interesting, it's a different design, because it goes on there, doesn't it? So we're going to take that off there. That's off. And that goes on there what's going on yes it's going on that's good clickety clickety click click face okay I think that's on right it's, oh no it's not on that side on and then it pops off. Let's just check the fitment of the old one. This, this, this old one by the way is absolutely full of shit. I think actually it just butts up to it. It doesn't go over the outside of it. it. just goes over that little lip there, the base, like that. Right then that goes back in, okay, and then the o-ring goes over the outside of it. Before we go any further, I'm going to clean up this space here because it just looks like someone has a massive clean That must be tub of cleaner than this.
two of these screws were loose as well. That's that. It's like someone's put some sealant or something on there. Not ideal, is it? Just getting all this crap off here. I don't know if we're supposed to lubricate these O-rings or not with a smear of Vaseline. I don't see that it's going to do any harm, so I'm probably inclined to do that. Let's check out what's that fucking spring which is over here somewhere. There it is. Making a bid for freedom. Uh, oh, God help us. Hot. Oh, petroleum jelly. And then all I'm going to do is just smear that over the seal. Or, 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 or. Pop that back over the top of the spring and down. Put these bolts back in. Reassemble. We'll see. If it works, it works. If it done, it's done. What we lost? Well, whatever the O ring pocket seal kit cost. But looking at the state of this thing and, and seeing that someone's been in here already, I'm inclined to think that um, someone might have been here before. We'll see. definitely been here before. Look, that fucking wire is crushed there. Oh, for God's sake. Oh, so we find a way for that. Because they're quite small. Got to go in there, you see. Get through my microscopic washer collection. If there ain't a washer, then it'll have to go back to the that one. Thousands of that size. before you nip them up, Richard. Right, so O-ring's in there, poppets in there, or non-return valve. Didn't say what these are supposed to be done up to. Uh, they're quite a small bolt, so not very tight is where I'm going with that. <coughs> Now let's pop it back in the, um, the housing. These two, I'm going to hang on to and show the customer. They don't look the best, do they? But then if they're original, fantastic. However, because we've got missing washers and things were loose, etc., um, I'm inclined to think that someone has been in there. I'm not going to do anything else with this. This is all I'm touching. So just take these out. See, that's loose. Loose. 
someone's been in here. Not just me. Okie dokie. Right. <coughs> Coffee. Oh. So, valve block goes back into casing. You're putting the right way up, Richard. wire doesn't get trapped behind it. That's why it was flattened out, wasn't there? There's one. Wires are all clear. Two. I think these were eight, these ones. I've got just here. Wires clear. There's no thread lock on these bolts when I took them out, so I'm not putting thread lock on them when I go back in. Um, they're all tight, they've all got washers behind them, so I think it'll be okay. Right, let's get the air uh, indent back in. That was um, 11 mil. No, it wasn't. It was 12 mil. number seven which is the dryer pipe and all I do is just push them in as hard as they will go normally you wouldn't take this pipe out you see but because we have been faffing around with it we have to and five because that's where it goes up to normally they have uh, stickers and labels all over them so let's go and uh, now <coughs> loom and loom. I'm going to go and refit this back onto the car now. And we'll see if it's made a difference. Air suspension is a lot quieter. I don't know if it's because I replaced that diaphragm or what, I don't know. You can hear it. Barely makes any noise. A lot quieter than it was. Still noisy at the back. It's going to stop now because it's a lot quieter, but it's still not brilliant. I think there's a problem in the valve block. Anyway, we've done that. Let's go down, back to standard height. Right, the next pain in the ass. Fucking seat ECU still does not work. So every function works apart from backwards and forwards.
every single fucking function. Now I know the switch works. In fact, I can try the switch on the other side. But I know the switch works. It just doesn't want to fucking know. It's driving up the wall. So, so far we've fixed the square root of half a problem. And it is now, I've got a feeling it's well over 35 degrees. I know my car's been sitting in the sun, but let's go and have a quick look. It's probably knock about four degrees off what it says. I'll find my keys. I do you reckon I'll put my keys? That's water mist though, I'm gonna go and stand in a minute. I am going to go and stand in the water mist. I don't care what is in the water mist, I'm just going to stand in it. Oh, here's my keys. Right. Dun, 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 dun. Let's go and see what it says. Because I left all the windows open like today, the tail was dust. Right, what does it say? Oh my goodness. It says 36. Oh, look at that. <coughs> bloody hot. Bloody, 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 bloody hot. Oh, the other thing that's annoying me about this is the passenger seat switch has failed as well. Now, I had, I had a go at fixing this. Um, but it's done. Nothing. I think the ignition's got to be in position one. The battery's got to be connected. Richard, go forward. You don't want to go backwards. Sometimes it's because the cover won't quite allow the switch to go back far enough. So that's the first thing I'm going to check to make sure that this is going back far enough. Everything else works on it. Okay. So I'll do the cover bit first of all. Basically that hole might not be long enough. You can't even see. I'll point with the other finger. That hole there might not be long enough. <coughs> oh my goodness. So we got the hole oh, just a minute. That is nice. That's very nice. I'm not whinging about the weather. It's just a bastard that I'm not sitting in a river enjoying it right now all i do here is very 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 carefully just flip it off come on you fuck right all i've got to do is very 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 carefully flip him off there like that see and then the top cover comes off and then we're getting nothing so this switch is going to come apart i think Try a bit of um, electrical cleaner in there first of all. <coughs> Something that I had fixed already. Works now. I think realistically I'm going to have to take the switch apart to see what is causing it. Too much of a bother. We should be able to move backwards and forwards now. Now with the driver's seat. Dun 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 The relays are clicking inside the ECU, but it's doing nothing. <sighs> Same fault as last time. They said the relay was sticky and they've replaced it. Um, I can actually hear the relay clicking. <clears throat> I'm not taking it apart because... <clears throat> Do you want to know what, what goes wrong with them, by the way, these ECUs? I have got one here. I got it off Barry. Hello, Barry. Um, over on Tambi Island. Superstar. He's going to be doing his Land Rover soon. But basically, there's the battery. And you can see where the battery's leaked out and destroyed all of the tracks. Here, they're all around this little chip. 
destroyed all the tracks. And then obviously once it's destroyed the tracks, my phone rings. So you don't actually need to have all the plugs plugged in. And the forward, backward, seat, back, base thing, the, the connector works on both sides. And driver's side switch works fucking beautifully, right? So we know the switch is good, okay? That's the first thing. Now, the next thing I did, let's unplug that. Take that back over there. I'll put this back together in a minute. So then what I did is I got the switch and I applied power to the terminals. And again, I can hear the click, but I can't hear any action. So there's a possibility that the loom is out or there is a possibility that the ECU is still faulty. So the next thing I need to do now is go down to the connector that this goes to under the seat, which means I've got to take the fucking seat out again, and put a bridge between the power supply and the, uh, the, the control. I think it's the red and the yellow wires. That's why I just took this thing apart. The red and the yellow wires, I think, go to the forward backwards motion. So if I find that loom and then I can bridge the two connectors, it might work. Ta-da! It was, um, there was two things actually. The loom that goes from the switch down towards the uh, actual ECU, there was a trapped wire on it, which I've untrapped, but it hadn't gone through the insulation, but maybe it was causing a problem. Um, and then possibly because of that, one of the fuses was blown, but not one of the fuses I was expecting. It's one of the CECU fuses, but not the one that dictates the forwards and backwards. So maybe the, maybe the manual's wrong. <laughs> Sorry, close the door and then the uh, the air suspension all goes berserk because the air suspension freezes while the car is uh, is parked. Right, need to put the switch together. Um, the only other things I've really done with this, I've put a new green oval on the back because I mislaid the old one. And I've treated the customer to a pair of these corners because the ones he had on the car were shit. Um... The passenger seat switch now works. Oh, there's my phone. So that works too. Um, yes, I think. Fucking up.